Welcome to night number 75 of History Bedtime Stories in our pajamas in bed. Tonight, let's talk about one of the greatest American mayors in our country's history, Mr. Hazen Pingree. Potato Patch Ping, Old Ping, the mayor of the people, Detroit's own. Now, Hazen Pingree, like so many great Detroiters, is not born here, but moves to Detroit. He's originally born in Denmark, Maine in 1840, and he fights in the Civil War under the Union Army. Following the end of the war, he makes his way to Detroit, and for a brief little bit of time, he works for the H.P. Baldwin Shoe Company. It's well there that he forms a partnership with Charles Smith, and in 1866, they found Pingree and Smith Shoe Company. The company becomes really successful, and by 1890, they are the largest American company producing shoes off the eastern coast in the entire nation. They make shoes for children, men, and women, and are becoming really successful, and Pingree has absolutely no ambition towards politics of any kind. In uh, 1872, he marries a Michigan-born woman, Miss Frances Gilbert, and they go on to have three children. He continues growing his company, and in 1889, when he is almost 50 years old, he is asked by friends in the Republican Party if he would stand for the mayoral election. Pingree agrees, and he wins, becoming mayor in 1890. He would serve as mayor until 1897, when his election to governor of the state of Michigan required him, after a Michigan Supreme Court ruling, to give up one of the offices and not hold both at the same time. Mayor of Detroit, Michigan's largest city, and governor of the state of Michigan. The Michigan Supreme Court ruling makes him give up one, and he gives up the mayor's office to remain governor. He stays governor for two terms, not running for re-election in 1900. Some scholars believe that was to set up a presidential bid, but we'll never know, because in 1901, at the age of 60, after an African safari with his son, he is in London, suffering from an illness that is so terrible, is so desperate. The King of England, who oddly looks a lot like Hazen Pingree, King Edward, sends his personal royal physician to the London Grand Hotel to try to ease Pingree's pain and suffering. Pingree does die uh, in London. His body is brought back to Detroit where it's buried in Elmwood Cemetery, later disinterred and reburied at Woodlawn Cemetery here in Detroit. But I wanna to talk to you about his brief but incredibly important time as mayor. As mayor of the city of Detroit, Pingree busted monopolies. He was called a mayor of the people because he believed in the working poor. He believed in the every man and every woman. He believed in education. As a monopoly buster, he went after the streetcars, the telephone companies, the electric companies, and the gas companies. And he was an early proponent of this idea that municipalities and cities should have a vested interest or ownership in their public utilities so that these monopolies can't be born that overcharge and overextend citizens. He fights incredibly hard to get Detroit into an electric plant uh, ownership position he brings down the price of streetcar rides for children. And in 1893, when the Depression hits, this big economic downturn of 1893, Pingree makes a proclamation. He says any publicly owned land in the city of Detroit can be used by citizens for farming in order to feed themselves and fight our starvation. When the city council refused to fund his plan, he sold his prize racehorse to buy the seeds and farming equipment necessary to be distributed to Detroiters to use these patches of land to survive a depression. For that, he gets the nickname Potato Patch Ping, and to this day is remembered as an early proponent of urban farming and self-sufficiency for urban communities. Pingree is uh, not only lovingly remembered, but immortalized here in Detroit with a statue at Grand Circus Park, as well as his bust in the Coleman A. Young Center. And I have a little article of um, cool Detroit ephemera in my collection I wanted to show you. This is a little pamphlet, skinny little thing, just staple bound, 
that was produced by the Pingree Shoe Company in 1910. It's called Detroit for Mine, and it may be hard to see, but this is sort of beautifully rose and embossed. On the inside, you can see that it's a gift of the Pingree Shoe Company. And this would have been a giveaway you would have got when you bought a pair of shoes or came into the shop to try on boots. Inside, it talks about the makers of fine shoes for women, men, and children, and then says, come to Detroit for your vacation. Visit our factory, among other points of interest. The Pingree Company, established 1866, incorporated 1902. And this is produced in 1910 with the Detroit Board of Commerce. And it is a vacationer's guide to Detroit. On each page, there is a different Detroit location. This one happens to be City Hall. It talks about who built it, where it was built, and its historical importance, as well as giving visitors a page to make notes. Each page has a beautiful photo, whether it's Waterworks Park, ooh, or the old Wayne County building. Some still stand, some are long gone. The YMCA building, sadly long gone. But my favorite part of this whole thing is on the back page, it says something about Detroit. And I'm just gonna go ahead and read this to you because I think it's a beautiful moment of 1910 Detroit captured. It says something about Detroit, the oldest organized city in the West, founded by Antoinette de la Mothe Cadillac, July 24th, 1701 seceded by the French to the British in 1760, awarded to the United States by the Treaty of Paris, 1783, held by the British in violation of treaty until 1796. Every house in the town except one burned June 11th, 1805, designated as the capital of Michigan's territory in 1805, surrendered to the British August 16th, 1812, recovered by the Americans September 29th, 1813 capital of the territory and state from this time until 1847. Present area of the city, 41.44 square miles. Population, December 1909, 450,000. Miles of street, 690, of which 350 are paved. Area in parks and boulevards, 1,200 acres. Assessed value, two. 249,700, I'm saying this wrong, 249,710,000 real estate, 110 million, personal property, 359,819,910 dollars, municipal debt, July 1st, 1909, 6.5 million, rate of taxation, $18.07 on the $1,000 valuation. Bank capital, 18 million. Bank deposits, 122 million. Number of factories, 1,600. Capital employed, 170 million. Wage earners employed, 90,000. Value of annual products produced in Detroit, $220 million. In 1910, Detroit produced $220 million of revenue through its factories, commerce, and export adjusted for inflation. It's about $17 billion in 2020. Wash your hands. We'll see you tomorrow night.